So now that I've got scrolling working, the next thing I need to address is these platforms. At the moment, I'm just creating a temporary bunch of them, but I wanna be able to automatically continue generating them as the player moves up the screen. So what I've got at the moment is this section here just above the game loop. If we scroll down here, so this is my main game loop, and just above here, I've got these temporary platforms. Now I'm gonna delete this. I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna be creating them within the game loop instead. Now if I run this without any platforms, there's nothing there for the player to jump on. Now, of course, in the actual game, whenever the player falls off the bottom of the screen, that's gonna be a game over condition. So what I want to do is have an initial starting platform. I want somewhere for him to be able to begin the game. So rather than having a section here that says create temporary platforms, I'm gonna change that to create starting platform. So I will manually create one initial platform to start with. I'll do it in the same way as I did previously. I'll say platform is the name of the instance, and it's an instance of the platform class. Now the arguments are going to be pretty much the same as before. So it takes the X, Y, and width. Now I want this to be pretty much in the center of the screen. So I will say my screen width, and I'll use floor division here. So I'll divide that by two. Then it needs to be not right at the bottom of the screen. So it needs to be lifted up a little bit. So I'll say my screen height, minus say 150 pixels and for the width i'll just pick 50 pixels across now that i've created the instance remember i'm using platform groups or rather sprite groups to control all these so i need to make sure that i add that into the group so i say platform group dot add platform so now this one is within the platform group which means that all of these methods below platform group update and platform group draw they'll be activated so let's run this again and now you can see I'm starting off on a platform up here. Actually, let's bring that up again. It's not quite in the center, so that, that didn't really work too well. I wanna move this over to the left and maybe I'll lower it down a little bit as well. So let's go back up to where I created it and I'll say screen width divided by two, say minus 50 pixels, screen height minus just 50 pixels. Try that again. Mm, it's better, but now it's a little bit too far over to the left. So maybe I just need to make this one wider. Okay, yeah, that looks a lot better. So it starts off on a pretty big platform to begin with, and then subsequent platforms will be generated up from this one. So how do I actually automate these platforms? How do I tell it how many to create and where to put them? Well, remember I had this variable at the beginning. If I go to the top of the game here, I've got a variable here called max platforms. So this is set to 20, which means that that's how many platforms I'll be able to create in one go. And it's maybe a little bit too high, actually. I can probably just limit this to, say, 10. I think I might have changed this to 20 just to experiment in the previous video. But I can tweak this as I go along. If it's not enough, then I can add more platforms. But I don't really want to generate platforms that I don't need because I can only fit so many of them on the screen at a time. So this is saying that this is how many platforms I'll have within the game at any one time. Then I can go into my main game loop and essentially just say that until I reach that limit, until I get to 10 platforms, I just want to keep creating more of them. So that's the way I'm going to be able to fill out all of the platforms onto the screen. So if we go to my game loop, now I've got my scroll control here. So this is where the player is moving. Then I've got the background being drawn. Uh, I can actually get rid of this section. So this is the temporary scroll threshold that I had. If I run this again, it's this line up here. So I don't really need that anymore. I can get rid of that one. And this is where I'm actually updating the platform group. So just before this then, just so between where I'm drawing my background and where my update in the platforms, I'm gonna have a section where I actually create platforms. So I'll add a comment to say generate platforms. And what I wanna do is check, first of all, if I've reached that max platforms limit. So I can see how many platforms I currently have by just looking at the length of that platform group. Say len platform underscore group. And this essentially is going to be telling me how many of these instances I have created and added into this group over time. So at the very beginning, I only have one of them. So I've created this one initial starting platform and that's going to be the length of this group. So if that's the case, then I can say if that is less than max platforms, so we haven't reached our limit yet, well then we can create more platforms. So just keep making more and more of them. So to create the platforms, I'm gonna be doing the same thing as I've already done up here. I need to create an instance of the class and give it these arguments. The arguments were the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and the width for each platform. So first of all, let's just make this, uh, make sure this is actually working. And I'll say 
if that length is less, then create a new platform. So platform is equal to an instance of the platform class. And then the coordinates, well, let's just copy what I've already got up here, just temporarily. I'll just copy this down, put that in here. Oops. So this is going to be my X coordinate, Y coordinate, and the width. So all these platforms are going to be exactly the same as the previous one, as the one that I've already created. So once they're created, I need to make sure that I add them to the group platform underscore group dot add platform. And that's pretty much it. Now, of course, this isn't going to work very well. What's going to happen is I'm going to generate a whole bunch of these platforms and they're going to be all overlaid on top of each other because the coordinates are the same. So you're still really just going to see the one platform. But just to demonstrate that it's working, let's print out the length of the platform group. So what should happen is this should reach up to a value of 10 and then stop. So I run this again and there we go. As soon as it started, now you can only see one platform, but there's 10 of them stacked on top of each other. Uh, I have to scroll quite far up now, I think. Go back. Yeah, so it started off and then it just created a whole bunch of them until we reached the limit. So I know the generation is working, but now I need to actually stagger them on top of each other and kind of randomize their position a little bit. So first of all, to randomize, I need to import an additional module. So we go all the way to the top where I'm, oh, in fact, I've already got it. I've imported random already. So that's the module that I was going to use for, for this randomization. Uh, since it's already there, I can just start pulling the methods from it. So come back down here where I'm generating platforms. And uh, what I want to do is randomize the X coordinate and not fully randomize the Y coordinate because I kind of want them to stagger relative to the previous one. I don't want them to be like all over the screen. I want them to be a certain distance from the one below just to make sure that there's always a next platform that the player can jump onto. And then I'd also want to randomize the width a little bit as well. So to do that, I'm going to define little variables to start with. So I'll say P underscore W. So this will be my platform width. It's going to be random dot rand int. So it's going to be a random integer and it's going to be in the range of 40 to 60 pixels. So I know I made the start in 100, but that one's really big. So in reality, I want them to be about 50 pixels plus or minus 10. So that's going to give me my width. Now I need to look at the X coordinate. So P underscore X is going to be random dot rand int. And now the X coordinate can be anywhere from across the screen. So the smallest that the X coordinate could be is zero. It could start all the way on the left and the biggest would be all the way on the right. So that would be screen width. However, you have to take into account the width of the platform itself. So if I started it at exactly screen width, it would just go off the edge of the screen. So I need to say the maximum X coordinate could be screen width minus platform width, P underscore W. And now lastly, I need the Y coordinate. So we'll say P underscore Y. So just the same as I've been doing so far equals. Now the difference here is Although I do want to have a random variable, I also want it to be referencing the previous platform's position. So what I could do here is just say platform.rect.y. And what this is going to do, because at this point, remember, I haven't created the next platform. So what this actually does is it takes the location or the, the Y coordinate of the previously created platform. So when I started the game, before my game loop, I created a platform here. Now, when I come to this point here to generate these variables, remember that platform still exists. It's not been overwritten yet. So when I take PY and I reference platform rec.y, what I'm taking here is the Y coordinate of the platform I've just created previously. Now, straight after that, I create a new platform which has the new coordinates. But then when this iteration is run the next time in this loop, well, when it comes to take the Y coordinate, it then takes the platform that was just created before. So this allows me to essentially always monitor where the previous platform was and then build up from it. So now I will be able to stagger another platform above. So if I'm moving up the screen, that means the Y coordinate is decreasing. So I need to say minus and then a random value. So random dot, dot rand int. And this is going to be between 80 to 120 pixels. So 100 pixels plus or minus 20 in each direction. Okay, so now that I've finally defined my X, Y, and width, I can replace this section here. I can say this is now P underscore X, this is P underscore Y, and then, the, oops, missed the start there, and then this is P underscore W for my width. Okay, and now that should be everything. If I run this again, 
Now I've got a whole bunch of platforms staggered on top of each other. And the first one is the big one. That's where I start off. But then you notice the sizes, they're not massively different, but you can definitely see a difference here. And it's just that randomization within it. So they're anywhere between 40 to 60 pixels wide. They're kind of staggered anywhere across the screen. But notice that the gap between them is always quite similar and it's always just around 100 pixels so this means that i can always reach the next platform up whenever i jump so this is working great however you notice i still seem to run out of platforms and why is that happening well remember there's a variable here which is max platforms so as long as the number of total platforms that's been created is less than that variable i'll create more but as soon as I reach that limit, I'm going to stop creating them. Although the other platforms are not visible anymore, they are still in the memory. It's just they're being drawn way, way down off the bottom of the screen so you can't see them. That means that what I actually need to be doing here is adding an additional check. So when a platform goes off the bottom of the screen, it gets deleted. It needs to be removed from memory and that way I can create new platforms as they come in above. So I will always just have 10 platforms regardless. Now to do that check, I need to go back into my platform class, which is up here. In the platform class, I only have an init method so far and this update method, which really just has this scrolling variable. So it just makes sure that when the player jumps to the top of the screen, the platforms are able to move against them. So what I want to add in is an extra check after this. So just underneath, I'll add a little comment to say, check if platform has gone, oops, on off the screen and this check is just going to look at the y coordinate of the platform's rectangle so i can essentially say that if self dot rect so remember because i am in my platform class that i'm working here self is going to refer to each individual instance of the platform so each platform is going to be doing this check against its own rectangle and what i want to do is see whether the top of that rectangle so rectangle top has gone off the bottom of the game window bottom of the screen so if that variable is greater than, remember, y coordinate moves, uh, moving down is increasing. So if something is below something else, then the y coordinate is greater than. So if that's greater than the screen height, well, in that case, that platform doesn't really need to be there anymore. We can't see it. We can never go back to it. So just remove that platform. That's what we call self.kill. And that's going to delete that instance entirely. Now, if we run this again, and I start jumping up. Uh, oops, let's see if I can make it further. So now you can see I've definitely gone past the 10 platforms and they just keep appearing. So no matter how high I go, I'm just constantly going to be creating more and more platforms. And the reason for that is essentially that whenever one of these has gone off the bottom of the screen, it's been deleted. So if I count how many I've got on the screen right now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got four platforms remaining actually before I run out. So there's probably four other ones that's already been created and are waiting for me up above the game window for when I get there. And that's it. So this has created an infinite array of these platforms. For no matter how long I play, they're just going to keep getting created. And that's it for automated, automated platforms. So I hope you found that useful and thanks for watching.